So did I mention before that uh, this cab is shot and I really should just replace it, but I ain't got that kind of time or that kind of money. So I'm reconstructing and re-strengthening, if you want to call it that. I actually have the cab jacked up here on the corner with a block of wood. So I need to straighten that brace out. I'm going to put this angle iron in. I made a slot there in the floor. So I'm going to tie the tunnel to that uh, short cross member. And this tube here is going to tie in to this. So something like that. And we'll wall it to that. Because I need to get, I guess, these two tied together to add strength back to the cab. I do have a seat belt issue here, so I'm considering taking this piece and <clears throat> maybe setting that in there so I can run the seat belt bolt through. I'll come up short, but I think I can find something else to connect the two here because I go here. Yeah, that'd be great. I come up short back here. So, <laughs> can only luck out so much, I guess. So, yeah. And it goes way up there, guys. It's bad. What? Can't stop now. Just gonna have to patch it up best I can. Hopefully it'll be strong when I'm done. And so, this is what I've come up with so far. I think it's going to work. I think it might. Well, got angle iron tying that to the tunnel. Got square stock tying it from that point back to that point. So I'll weld it in. I found some more angle stock. So I ran that along the rocker. I actually married it to another short one I had. And I'm working on getting that all taken care of. I'm pretty somewhat confident that I have put strength back into the corner of the cab. And I have a secure mounting point after drilling for the seat belt and the eventual mounting of the uh, bracketry to bolt the seats back into this thing. So from here, at least I got something to lay the sheet metal down onto. We'll just keep plugging away on it, but uh, I'm going to call it quits for tonight because, yep. It's dark out. Time for me to go back home. So I'm up here at Dad's garage. All right, stay tuned. Still more to come. All right, now I've established a uh, structure to uh, adhere a floor pan to. We're going to take some old cardboard here and lay it in there. And come up with some dimensions I can transfer over to my flat sheet to uh, start putting the floor back on this thing. So this gets me roughly started. I'm going to take this cardboard back out here in a minute and compare it to my flat sheet and see what I can work with. Um, this is an exact measurements where I can add here and there to get what I need to uh, come up with a, a starting point. Now, underneath, we're going to trace around those braces on the underside of that cardboard to find out where they are and establish a center point where I might be able to do a couple of plug welds 
uh, to hold that flat sheet down so it doesn't vibrate. So looking underneath, we can see where the braces are. Uh, never mind that one, that goes to the running board. I want to start tracing a line on both sides of that and around so I can figure out where the bottom is. And from there we can start drilling a couple holes to transfer it to the flat sheet. All right, let's flip this over and see what we got. So that gives me the marks on either side of these cross members. That's the center. Of course, that would be the outside. So all I need to do, grab the marker here. Is, yep. Do that. We do this. Right here will just be on the edge, so we really don't need to be too concerned. So when I cut through there, I'll know where to put the holes so that when I get that flat sheet, we can weld to this. So that's what those lines are for. So something like that, that'll help hold it down. But I'm gonna start here with the big one, get that put in. We're gonna have to make a slice in the steel here to allow it to lay down well, i don't know it's really that important but that's the way it is because your seat riser is always higher because you want to have foot well room when they build these things that's why that dip is there i don't really plan on putting carpet back in this so even when we're all completely done it's going to get seam sealed and i found an old gallon of Bed liner that may or may not be any good. It's probably 10 years old. Uh, I might be able to uh, throw that in here and uh, seal up what's left. But I want to get that done so I can attack this. And then, of course, you guys saw earlier all that. So I get that sheet in there up to this point. And I'll bring the next piece down and I can weld an overlap onto that other sheet and we'll be rocking and rolling from there. No problem. All right, that's the plan. All right, before I get crazy with the cutoff wheel, I wanted to come back and lay this down as a whole. Double check to make sure I didn't screw anything up. But uh, that's why I work with metal and not with wood. I'm satisfied with what's going to be going down. The only mark I'm worried about is that one. But I'd rather cut short and then keep trimming back this way if I need to. Rather than come way back here, then I, got, I can still see the ground. <laughs> you definitely don't want that. So... I think we'll drill some holes and I'm contemplating yeah I really should trim that off like we talked about I can still use that strip elsewhere for fill-ins so let's uh, trim this out and get some holes drilled and see where we lay all right holes drilled oversize because the Cross members are obviously much thicker, therefore it can take more heat. I don't want to fill up a hole on this sheet metal before I get any bite on the understructure. So we've got this piece trimmed. I'm just going to grab a hold of it here. Mwah! Super strong. 
that there. Knock some stuff off the bench. Let's try it again. Look at that. The strength of a woodchuck. Alright. Let's take the sole of the truck and see how close we got. Oh yeah. After drilling, gotta go on the back side, knock off all the drilling slag. And this isn't just any old thin sheet metal. This has got some thickness to it. Really stout. Hardly doesn't even flex. Good stuff. All right, got it dropped in. I have some leeway here because the underlayment. You see now we push this down. See, we can weld that right down. <clears throat> Over here is where I'm hitting. I kind of knew that going in. So we'll just take the marker. Got the eyeball measuring tape. And there we go. Up there, I think it's going to land where I want it to land. I can come back a little bit, not a problem. Don't think we're going to have too much problem there either. That's why we have hammers to beat things around. I can actually make this kind of walk up a little bit if I need to to get on top of this. So I want to make sure I have that where I want it. There you go. Actually, film where I'm pointing at and get that back a little further. See if I can pull on it. I'll slice my fingers up. As long as I can get this to lie down nice and flat, then I think we'll be all right. But I do have to remove that piece. This is complete junk. We'll get that out of there and we'll work on another piece uh, here probably tomorrow because I'd like to try and get this welded in here in the next hour. No, I'm not going to film for a whole hour welding the panel in. We'll come back here in a minute. All right, turn a little more off and I'm going to share a little trade secret with you guys. You're dealing with slightly thicker steel that doesn't exactly want to cooperate. Take the cutoff wheel and make a score. So what I've done here, I got a little bend, made a notch, and I scored it through here. I'm ready to take this tool, pliers will work too. They call these duck bill pliers. They're handy for bending. See if we can bend one part of it on film. Get my glove off or try to hold the camera without stopping it. Let's see if I can do it here one handed. There we go. So that's lifting up. I don't need to lift it straight up. We're just putting a little bit of an angle on it. See if I can get away with this one. There. That should follow the contour in the floor. I also made a slit here because I got another part that I think this needs to go down and this stays up. Um, not sure how it's going to work just yet so I throw it back in there. So let's uh, go back to the truck and see how this looks.
Let's get this welded. Good. Try not to rust my arm on a hot weld. Laying nice and flat, guys. I don't have any gaps between the floor sheet metal and the braces. It's working out really well. I've got the camera set up on the tripod in the cab. It's uh, leaning precariously. Right if I start hammering, <laughs> you guys are going to do a nosedive.
I hope that freaks you guys out. I mean, well, and the sparks are flying up underneath the dash. Like most of us see sparks coming out of the dash, we're uh, bailing out, right? All right, I'm gonna try to hammer. Hopefully, I don't uh, knock you over. Not go much, just enough. Right, this is a true straight metal right out of the supplier. This is second hand metal. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta go back and fill out a little bit if you don't get it all the first pass. I don't have to do that. That happens. Yeah, that one rock solid. I like it. There's a cut over here, it might be out of frame. If you saw it was on the saw horses. I had to do to get a contour. Now I'm able to push it down as hard as I can. I'm gonna have to stand in here and do it. Did I mention the smell is really thick? See if we can get it to that corner first. Stay. Oh, you popped. I knew you would. Go further up in the middle, I guess. Can't see anything. Getting dark. Alright, coming in. Watch out. Sometimes you gotta do this. I mean, you can do this. You probably touch your toes at 50. There. Got it. I didn't knock you over yet. I thought for sure that was going to happen. I'm move this Maybe over here. Get a bite somewhere. down over here. I'm holding on top of that brace I put in earlier. Let's see. I think my light here is messing with my auto dim. So 
We'll just move this over here. Hang it up here, maybe. If that happens. The knob didn't move. These things have adjustable knobs on, not that this. So Things are solar powered. I've been known to take them outside in the sunlight and charge them up, I guess. transmission tunnel I'm actually doing a constant bead even though I'm stitching I want to get
You guys getting bored yet? Yeah, I know there's only two or three of you watching. Hey, get back here. Still need these three of you watched. Oh, there you go. Told you it was going to happen. Alright, take you over. Make you all dizzy. Well, that's about 16 minutes worth. You can see what I've done so far. Getting that wall of the tunnel. We got all of them done. Got a few of these done. But I'm going to keep on going here. I'm going to call it a night here in a minute. Again, I really appreciate you guys watching. Like and subscribe. Help me out. See ya.